everyone, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. Mm -hmm. I am Frivolous Dawn, and I am the fourth of eight children in our family's birth order. And I am Frugal Miss Penny, and I am first in our family's birth order. And Dawn and I would like to give a shout out and a hearty welcome to our returning viewers. We are so tickled you're with us this week. And as always, we hope that you can take a nugget or two away from the things that we've learned. And on top of that, a little bit of inspiration. And for those of you who are first time viewers, welcome. We're so glad that you've made time to sit in with us. Um, we're hoping for you that you too will walk away and glean something from our fiber adventures. So it's time to get your knitting, pick up your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor because you're going to need it for episode 56 of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Take it away, Dawn. Okay, when you said nugget or two of information, <laughs> I, I focused on nugget, which made me think of chicken nuggets, which makes me think I'm hungry. <laughs> How's that? So I didn't hear anything you said after that because I was thinking chicken nuggets. Okay. Pretend like you know what you're doing and go for it. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. What's around my neck? I'm sure that's what you were thinking. I was. Um, I was. This is, um, we're declaring today National Melanie Berg Day since mm -hmm. um, I'm in a Zoom with her later. Now, it's not a personal Zoom. <laughs> I'm joining a yarn shop in the Twin Cities. Um, this is Nick's by Melanie Berg, N-I-X-E. So I don't know if it's Nix or Nixie. I think it's a German word referring to uh, mermaids. And this mm -hmm. is a pattern that came out a little over a year ago, I think. Um, it is the exact same yarn that is in the picture on the pattern, and it is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It is Belage yarn. I don't know the colorways because they're in German. Um, it's a sport weight. And I think it was knit on a US six. I She does a lot in sport weight, so I love that. So it's a triangle, um, lots of beautiful slip stitches. Um, this is just a nice, nice shawl. Now, pretty mellow for me as far as colors, but when I saw that picture, I was like, oh, I need it. And um, I call it, I always get her patterns when they first come out, so they're at a discount. So I would call it two on the frugalometer. Now the yarn's another story. Okay, <laughs> so you know how, you know, after a pattern releases and there's kits available. And so I did the buy now little button <laughs> and it was in British pounds, not US <laughs> dollars. So it looked like a killer deal. I'm pretty sure when I got my visa bill, not quite so good um, <laughs> on the exchange rate. So I'd call it probably a four. Uh -huh. it has just nice fiber so um yeah i like it what what's around your neck well this is a repeat showing of that nice stitch cowl which, by the way it was a nice stitch to knit um it is a pattern by susan ashcroft and you can see it's just very nice and methodical and balanced and it is in a fiber that is a mystery to me because it was a gift from you, Dawn, and you had no idea what it was. Um, nice and soft, maybe a bit of silk in it, I don't think, but maybe. Um, and so both of them for me earn a dollar sign on the frugalometer because the pattern was free and the yarn was a gift. Very mm -hmm. nice. Now, again, since it's National Melanie Berg Day here on Frivolous and Frugal, this is Morel, another pattern by mm -hmm. Melanie Berg. It is a um, asymmetrical triangle, as you can see. It is done with heritage sock in the white and black colorways. <laughs> <laughs> um, knit on a US four. For those of you um, who are interested, these smaller squares up here, the black squares in the white section, those were done as color work. If I remember right, these larger blocks down here were in Tarja. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and again, I'm, I love black, but I'm not a fan of working with it. And so, um, and I realized I didn't do a very good block here. This is kind of wonky, but um, 
Yeah, I like it. And so in her books, the two shawl books she's released, at the end of her books, she actually gets permission from people who have posted pictures on Ravelry. So this original shawl in the book was done in a gray and a purple, but the picture she showed in the back of the book was a black and white. And ooh, I'm just a sucker for that combination. So that was the inspiration behind that. I have a quick question, Don. Do you think that would be a great shawl for a beginner who's never done intarsia? Oh, yes. Yeah. And same okay. with color work. Okay. Uh, you can see there's, you know, you don't need to capture floats. Right. Because they're now again, this is probably relatively new for color work for me. I can't really remember. So sometimes I have a tension issue because if I pull those floats too tight, uh, um, then you have to torture it when you <laughs> when you block it. <laughs> well, you, you're quite proficient at that, by the way. Nobody that? makes a garment squeal during blocking like you do. <laughs> I'm figuring uh, very aggressive blocking or Gorilla Glue, whatever works for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm flexible. <laughs> Literally. Um, and I will tell you that Opal is sporting another scarf that you have all seen. It is a wonderful example of wrong yarn for the garment. Now, the, the, the pretty, very nice neon minis come from hedgehog fiber sock yarn, which was perfect for the drape in this scarf, right? The name of the scarf is Elevation. It is by Aspen Knits. Nice pattern, but I combined it because I wanted to get into Deep Stash 2002 and use up that navy as a contrasting color. And you can see it right here. It's just too sticky and too coarse. Took the drape right out of it. Um, however, I was not gonna go back and re-knit it. I might as well just um, use it as an example. So both of them earned, I believe I put three dollar signs on the frugalometer, not necessarily for the pattern, but for the fiber. Um, Hedgehog was a little on the, the pricey side for me. So I knit that on a size four. And you knit the same one. Yours was much nicer, by the way, than mine. We and did it together as a knit along. Why do I think I have those minis? Was that through Knit Stars? Good question. I don't even remember. That was yeah. back, for, and I still don't do a very good job of it, annotating where I get everything. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For some reason, I think I have those minis or maybe a similar set. Um, I have a cowl in mind for it, but have yet to do it. <laughs> All right, so I guess you want to know what I'm working on because I'm sure that's your dying question this morning. It is. It is. Ooh, okay, so speaking of bold colors, here we go. <laughs> um, this is the beginning beginner's brioche scarf by Lavanya Petricella. <laughs> Look, and that's just halfway. <laughs> It's going to be oh, huge. It is going to be huge. So I teach a class called Brioche 102, which is two color brioche flat. So I knit the scarf up as a shop model with, I think it was worsted weight yarn. It, it may have been, yeah, I bet it was worsted, but the pattern's written for super chunky. So I thought, let's give it a try. I keep looking at that pattern. Um, and she did it in Rasta by Malabrigo. But mm -hmm. um, I got this yarn at Silver Thimble in Green Bay, Rowan Big Wool. <laughs> yes. Now, it's not this color. I can't find my other two skeins. But um, so <laughs> a little thing when I teach brioche is whatever yarn you use, you look at the ball band and you look at the needles that are recommended on the ball band and usually go up a size. If you're super loose, you wouldn't have to. But this recommends a 15 to a 19. There is no bigger size, people. OK, so <laughs> I just um, I'm thinking loose and I'm using a US 15. And you know what? When you look at these, these could be like weapons <laughs> and they clink on the table. Um, <laughs> but it does make a nice, 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 uh, thick, cushy. Um, pattern and they're supposed to be fringe <laughs> so uh that reminds me of the 70s but i'm going to try it with fringe when, if i can find my other two skeins um if not it's about done <laughs> so, uh, it calls for like 100 inches 110 inches something like that so oh my goodness um, i'm just gonna knit till there's uh no more yarn i think that's a frugal idea yeah and i think again for beginning brioche big needles big yarn 
makes yeah. sense to me just to help you with the visual of learning to read your brioche stitches. So, um, yeah, that's what's on um, or what I'm working on. What are you working on? Oh, well, because I'm monogamous, <laughs> this is going to be a repeat. So you are getting a fresh episode, um, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. I am working on Wingspan by Kyle Bay. And this is a, it's going to block out in a very nice shawl pattern. I'm trying to see because it's on a circular, it's hard to see, but I am working on, I think the third to the last section of these flowers. And actually I have re-knit where I tinked back. I tinked back about six and a half inches and now I'm moving forward. But I am going to tell you, Dawn, I am a bit nervous. Because if you read the pattern, the pattern says, oh, make sure you leave X number of yarn in grams to finish off each of the feathers. So I'm going to have a total of 24 feathers on the edges of this um, shawl. And that way you sh you'll know if you're going to run out of yarn. <laughs> um, okay, so I weighed it, which I don't typically do did the math and I'm hoping I don't run out of yarn. Wow. If I do and you hear a squeal in the background from Green Bay, it's me going, oh no, I ran out of yarn. So I'll keep everyone posted. Um, it's not going to be done in the next week or two. So I'll have plenty of time. And on the frugalometer, I've been saying four for both the pattern and the fiber. <sighs> I think I'm going to go five, five dollar signs on the frugalometer. And I'm knitting on a size six, by the way. And the yarn I'm using is Blue Brick Manitoulin Sparkle Merino or Merino Sparkle Woolly Mammoth in the Ibis colorway, which is the yarn called for in the, um, what do you call it, pattern. That was a mouthful saying all that about the yarn. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was a lot of order, but nevertheless, um, it's because I'm trying to knit this pattern <laughs> while we're on the podcast. So anyway, looks like you're looking over your um, knitting too. Is there anything else on your needles? Um, yeah, I just uh, needed to finish that row. Let me set this aside. So I am doing the shift by Andrew Mowry. This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Oh, okay. It was a class at Silver Symbol, and you saw it last week, but I've made a little progress. Ooh, look at you. So I'm pretty sure my stitch marker down there was where I was last week. Actually, I probably should go this way, huh? Anyway, I am on section six of seven. So oh, I am not far that. off. Nope. Now you'll notice, let me bring the pattern back because I think this will explain better what I was trying to say last week. The ladies at the shop who are in the class all used variegated yarn like you see here. Now, the pattern calls for spin cycle, but they are using the Zauer ball. Okay. And they pick three different colors. So it's constantly changing colors. And so this is constantly not changing colors. <laughs> so I'm using solids and it has just a totally different appearance to it. So. Um, some days I think I'm gonna like it. Some days I think it looks very geometrical and hard on the eyes. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. Nice slip stitch pattern, well-written. Um, I am using Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. Um, and I'm using a size six, I believe. I'd have to look at my pattern page to confirm that, but um, Nice yarn. It's a singles yarn, so it should bloom beautiful. And you know what? When you're wearing it, if you pick one of those colors to wear underneath, it'll probably be fine. But um, yeah, I've enjoyed the class, and I think we only have one more meeting for that. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fun. And I think I would agree with you, Dawn. Once it gets scrunched up around your neck, I think it'll break up some of that um, busyness of the geometric yeah. designs. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, when they say trust the pattern, maybe you should trust their yarn selection too. <laughs> uh, I've never knit with spin cycle, um, but you know, the Zauer ball is a great alternative to that. So 
Oh, that is a nice yeah. idea. Nice uh, substitution, I should say. Yeah. Now, what else is on your needles? I'm monogamous. Okay. Um, the only other thing on my needles is the antler toque by yeah. Tin Can Knits. Um, I'll tell you, I'm going to, I see, I'll show you. Okay. Wrong yarn. You can't see the cables very well. Oh, I would I agree with this. I would yep. agree. I love this yarn. Joanne from Magpie's Cottage gave it to me. She dyed it and just didn't care for it for um, whatever reason. And she didn't know the yarn quality. It feels like a 75, 25 maybe. And I love the cabled antlers, but man, you just aren't seeing it. Um, you know, the way you would want to, so. Right. So again, not a wasted project, just maybe not one that best illustrates the pattern and the texture. Yeah. I like the colors though, it's nice autumn colors. And I'm behind on the knit along because people are doing the Granger toque now um, for the frivolous and frugal hat knit along. I just realized I goofed up a cable too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice pattern. I love tin can knits, um, free pattern. It goes from baby all the way through large adult. Um, they're very good about giving you hints if you want to change yarns um, mm -hmm. and things like that. So I really appreciate them. So they both get one on the frugalometer because <laughs> free and free. <laughs> you can't beat that. Yeah. Very um, cool. And I'm doing that, not the largest size, the one down from them. Okay. So knit on, I think the pattern called for a six and eight. I dropped to a five and seven. And um, We'll see what it's like at the end. I'd almost like even a tighter ribbing at the bottom. Oh, so I'll if just you uh, do it again. Yeah, and I think for some reason, why do I think we've knit this before? Um, it is similar to another hat we knit. Okay, um, that's why. That's why. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the um, you know I, I have tenacity keeps going. Um, that baby blanket keeps going. But um, until there's significant progress on either one, I'll just wait and show those when we have Miss Brianna with us. Okay. All right, so what's oh, off your yeah. needles? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely nothing. So um, I have it's, to... uh, it's the frivolous dawn show today. Take it away. Well, when you're monogamous and you're knitting something, yeah, I had to figure that there was nothing there. So yes. All right, these are done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These are the Pioneer Gloves by yes. Kelly McClure. Mm -hmm. Free pattern. <laughs> Thank I you for all the nice comments on this horrible yarn. Um, <laughs> no, not horrible yarn, horrible color. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. And I don't even know what yarn it is. It feels okay. Madeline Tosh-like to me. Again, the first time I've done a pattern where the actual ribbing pattern is used in the gusset. I, I love it. That. Now I made the long version, very long. I don't know, I'd be tempted to do a maybe a little bit shorter and put a tighter rib, not sure. And I have in my notes, these are for Donna. Is that true? <laughs> if it is Donna, yes. let me know, they're it's yours. Donna, they're yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, somebody said it was just a color choice. It's not in my palette. And that was so sweet to say that. Oh, that was very sweet. All right, then my next finished project is from this book. <laughs> oh, your salt water mittens. Yep, and I did the uh, Bacaloo. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, look at you. Look at these. Dawn, so, I like this. Me I, too. I like Br them. Briggs and Little. <laughs> one, of the, one of the gals on the Zoom said Briggs and Stratton. <laughs> <laughs> it's Briggs and Little. Briggs and Little in the regal base, which is a light worsted. And the colors are red, bleached white, and dark gray. Not a big fan of the dark gray. I think I should have used a light gray, but that'll be for the next pair. I followed the pattern as written. Look at so, you. Um, my second one wasn't smaller, um, but a couple of things you can see. I'd like these to be a little bit tighter. Okay. So I think when I do the ribbing, I'll just drop down a couple needle sizes. And okay. these are just a tad big on my hand. You can see the pinch point there. Uh -huh. So I just wrote a note that just to drop down a needle size. Oh. And so and that, that should work. Should take care of your cuff as it should right. take care of all the extra room then. Yeah. Too much positive ease. 
And um, of course, now these are just steam blocked. Maybe when I wet block them and they dry, they'll even dry tighter. So I guess I'll reserve that final decision for that. Um, very little yarn usage. Um, I don't even know if there's 200 yards um, or maybe a little bit more than that. How nice. I think the next ones, I'd like to try a different pattern and try a full mitten. So thanks to Jen Katz on Ravelry. She's been our mentor and cheerleader through all this um, as she is from the island of Newfoundland. Newfoundland, yeah. Newfoundland. I, never, I never know how I'm pronouncing it. Thank you, Miss Jen. We appreciate your help with this. Yeah, very much so. Yes, yeah, so um, I need to do another pair of fingerless gloves for a gift. So it'll be maybe a couple of weeks or so before I cast on the next pair. If you get a chance, look on the Ravelry um, discussion board for our podcast for the saltwater mittens. The inspiration is amazing. Some people are on their second pair already. So um, yeah, so those are the only two things off my needle. And I think those were knit on a US six as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and that's sticky wool, but um, I like it. And, and I bought a few skeins, so I need to do a couple more. Yeah. You are going to be knitting mittens for the entire town of Green Bay. Yeah, no um, doubt. <laughs> well, listen, I guess that kind of bleeds in. So what are you learning this week? Okay, are you ready? It's profound. I'm sure. It, yours always is, John. I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. How do you eat an elephant? <laughs> So you've all heard that phrase, <laughs> one bite at a time. So how do you finish these monster scrappy projects? One bite at a time. And so I'm thinking I've been watching some podcasts that are doing little hashtags like make 20 or craft 20 minutes a day, knit 20 minutes a day. The focus being on these larger projects to, that seem to never end. And I have one of those projects on the needles. It is a corner to corner crochet scrappy blanket. And I'm going to try to just do 20 minutes a day on that to see if I can't get some progress. I'm sure it's been on my hook well over a year. It had been so long that when I picked it up the night before last, I had to watch the YouTube video on how to do it. <laughs> There's a clue. Um, yeah, so, you know, I've done a granny stri stripe blanket. I think you have two. Um, oh, no, mine's still on the needles. Oh, there you go. So um, I don't know what I'll do next. I'd have to look at some other scrappy projects because I have the scrap yarn. But um, I'm going to think the best way to eat an elephant, if it's one bite at a time, the best way to finish this afghan is going to be one row at a time. I'm thinking, Dawn, that's good advice for all of us who have uh as you know these catchphrases in knitting there's always catchphrases languishing whips so or ufos great way to pick it up which was the impetus behind finish fix flip or frog right right so, yeah, i heard a, i heard a podcaster call it a nep an n-e-p i'd never heard that phrase before a never-ending project <laughs> <laughs> nap. Oh my goodness, we're going to need a dictionary for and the, the other oh. thing I've been hearing podcasters say, you know how we just call a FO a finished object? Mm -hmm. No, I said that backwards. Anyway, they're calling them FFOs now, which is a um, like a completely finished would be finally finished. No, what's the word I want? FFO. Probably finally finished object. So it is ends are tucked in, it's blocked. So an FO could be just your knitting's done, but when you do all the finishing work, that makes it a FFO. Okay, so I don't know if I'll stick with that um, terminology, but it is kind of funny how we have these little phrases in knitting. I would say from my perspective of reading and language arts, finished should be finished. Yeah. Right. So I think it's coming too from the cross stitchers because they can get their cross stitch done, but then when they take the time to frame it, you know, do some of that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. Okay. Okay. Very good. Next. You know how I like oh. definitions of words. Oh, oh, speaking of definitions of words, you know, we added, <laughs> here I am speaking out of both sides of my mouth. 
Um, and we didn't actually, one of our viewers um, dubbed Dawn as uh, Tinks-a-Lot, Princess tinks -a -Lot. Well, what I'm learning this week is also profound, Dawn, <laughs> and it is one who talks a lot, tinks a lot. <laughs> so last night at Knitting with the Aunties, someone was talking a lot and she had to tink a lot this morning. So, um, and it was on wingspan as though this has not been a challenge enough. I have tinked more on this than probably anything. Um, I continued to do that this morning because it is somewhat intuitive, but if one does not make one where she should make one, it affects the, the, the final finished project. So for those of you who just need something to keep you at bay, one who talks a lot, tinks a lot. Oh, I'm doomed. Well, we both are. Oh my <laughs> goodness. And because I'm monogamous, I'm not giving up this project because if I was just doing simple knit, I wouldn't be tinking. I could talk. So maybe I need to think of a different little um, phrase for that. But that's all I'm learning. Nothing uh, profound. That's very good. What is uh, new at Frivolous and Frugal? Well, I'm glad you're working on that NEP, never ending project. <laughs> we have oodles to talk about today. So I'm going to put my knitting down for just a moment. And listeners, listen in. We have some giveaways this week. So before we get to the actual giveaways, remember that our big giveaway for 2000 subscribers is somewhat down the road. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Our next YouTube giveaway will not be until episode 58, but this episode, we do have a finish, fix, flip, or frog it, Cal, giveaway from our Ravelry thread. And using the random number generator during knitting with the aunties last night, our winner for this week is Miss Luann, textile grad. We are so excited that you won. Your post was um, the post where you talked about the first scarf you've ever knit and all the iterations thereafter. And so you talked about how it went from a scarf to a shawlette to a, cow a cowl. Perfect for that thread. So thank you, darling. And if you would, just um, message Dawn. Actually, it's probably, why don't you message me and we'll make sure you get out your gift, okay? Um, and then I have got to tell you, we've got a, a tidbit of news. For those of you who participated in our Frivolous and Frugal Hat Cal and did the Hermes hat, the designer Beatrice Rubio um, was just tickled that we chose her pattern. And so she contacted us and said we, she would like to give three free patterns to participants of that knit along. And it won't be the Hermes pattern, obviously. It will be one of the other patterns she has designed. So we chose randomly three people who posted their Hermes hat in our threads. And I'm going to announce those winners. But now listen carefully. Once you hear your name, email me and I will explain to you how you get to choose the pattern that she will give you. All right. So the first winner of the Hermes hat is Miss Elise KT. <laughs> we are so excited. Your purple hat, darling, was absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for participating. And then our second winner is Miss Leslie Carnacy is your username on Ravelry. And we enjoyed your beautiful brown hat. You too have just won a free pattern from Miss Beatrice. And finally, our winner for the Hermes hat is Miss Renee Granny Fly 81. You knit a beautiful lavender hat, and we are so excited that you too get a free pattern. So here's the deal. Email me, and I'll give you the instructions. But do you mind, Dawn, if I also give a little clue? Yes, go ahead. 
Miss Beatrice is going to be our special speaker in May in the Frivolous and Frugal Virtual Knit Night. So all the way from Chile, she will be joining us to talk about her designing journey and her patterns. So if you have never participated in one of our events, stick um, to the podcast for a couple more minutes and I'll explain how that works. So we have one more giveaway this week. We just we're feeling so excited about our group. And that is for our ornament cow. And if you need inspiration for knitting Christmas ornaments, I think Dawn and I look through that thread and we are just yeah. amazed. And what we did again was randomly selected one of the posts from that thread. And our winner for a special little gift is Miss Gail. Shaffley. So Miss Gail, you are amazing. Her goal is to knit an ornament a day. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. So if you would, darling, would you please email Dawn and she will get you your gift um, once she has your mailing address. So we can't thank all of our participants enough. It has just been fun to watch you explore new techniques, explore new fibers, new stitches, and even projects that you might not otherwise have tried. So thank you for being an inspiration to us. And we look forward to seeing more of your posts. Um, so those are our giveaways, Dawn. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. No. Okay, well, if I did, just stop me along the way. And if I don't recognize you when you raise your hand, please just shout out, like so many of our students. Um, this week, we do not have, uh, well, I can't say that. We don't have an honorable mention per se, but we do. So we'll get back to you um, in episode 57 for that. One thing I want to remind our viewers of is that Saturday, April 17th, next week is local yarn shop day. You are want, we are wanting you to support your local yarn shops in Indie Dyers, if at all possible. So do us a favor, visit that shop, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtually. We know that some designers are giving away free patterns with a purchase of yarn. I don't have a whole list of those, but I know that your local yarn shop owner will, and they'll have a coupon code for you as well. So please support those local yarn shops. Next on our list is last week we launched a survey to see who might be interested in joining us for a mini meetup in the Chicago area. And the purpose of our mini meetups is not to sell items. This is not a vending event. It is not um, a, an event where you're catered. <laughs> We don't cater to anyone. We are relaxed. It is an opportunity for us to get to meet you face to face. If you are in that area or within driving distance or want to join us, please complete the survey at the link in our show notes. Right now, we're looking like it may be a go, but yeah. we're going to definitively let you know that in a week or two once we see some numbers. And I'll let you know why we're waiting. Believe it or not, you would think that the meeting rooms in these hotels are free. At least frugal people would think that they're free, but they're not. So Dawn and I have to rent that room. We want to make sure we're not renting something that's way too big for our needs. Right. If it's just a few people, we can sit in the lobby of the hotel or rotate in uh, hotel rooms if we need to. Um, so this is why we want to make sure that it's feasible for us to do. So fill out that survey and we should be able to give you a definitive yay or nay in a week or two. Did you have anything to add to that, Dawn? And it's a suburb. We're not going into the city. Yeah. And it's on the weekend of July 30th and 31st this year, 2021, the same weekend that the Chicago Yarn Crawl kicks off. So... If you can't knit with us all day because you want to hit a few shops, we will not be offended. Um, our overarching guideline is always choose your own level of participation. So if you choose to come, you'll have to make your own hotel reservations. But the hotel that we've chosen is giving us a discount for those that want to spend the night. And we're going to just take meals as they come and go. We're not going to cater. We're not going to have real... Um, 
uh, bougie, uh, what do you call them, swag bags? No, no, no. <laughs> frivolous and frugal. So frugal's managing some of this. Um, it's just going to be time to sit, knit, chat, share, and inspire one another. Very good. That's a very good description. <laughs> <laughs> we catered it. We catered to nobody. <laughs> When you come from a family of eight, you must have a very young age. <laughs> you said that like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to feel like one every now and then. Um, and then a couple of other announcements. We will not be hosting a podcast the weekend of April 24th. Uh, typically, we try to release a podcast every Saturday. We are instead going for a weekend of refreshment. We are going to be attending the Magpie's Cottage Retreat. We're going to take our sweet little fearless Miss Brianna with us. And we're just going to go knit amongst fellow knitters for the weekend. That also means we will not have our morning virtual knit together on that Saturday. However, the good news is we're going to resume that in May. So if we're looking ahead to May, let me give you a couple of dates to put on your calendar. Our May virtual knit night is going to be Saturday, May 8th from 7 to 9 Central Standard Time. The link for that Zoom meeting will be posted about one hour before the event in a Ravelry thread. And as well, if you are not on Ravelry, if you email me, I will email you the link. Always, our virtual knit nights are two hours of nothing but knitting talk. We invite all of our participants to share what's on or off their needles. We give you an opportunity to showcase the item as well as explain and talk about the fiber, fiber and what you might have learned. We sometimes try to provide a special speaker, which by the time this airs, I don't know if you'll have time, but the April virtual knit night has a very special guest speaker. And then in May, our speaker will be Miss Beatrice, the designer of the Hermes hat. Now, later in the month, usually the fourth Saturday of the month, which in May is going to be May 22nd, we hold a virtual knit together. It is on a Saturday morning from 10 to 12 p.m. 10 in the morning to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And once again, same format. We just want to get to know you and give you an opportunity to share what you're working on. If you're someone who really needs to see and hear about how patterns have been changed or different yarns have been substituted, you'll want to attend our events because we see it all. Our, our knitters are phenomenal and our crocheters about sharing the changes they've made and the lessons they've learned. And as always, Dawn and I and our faithful Miss Nikki, who by the way is our sister, and she is kind of the behind the scenes part of Frivolous and Frugal. Uh, we hope to feature her always in, in our virtual events, but also uh, maybe in one of our podcasts again, we take as best as we can fastidious notes about the projects that have been mentioned, the fibers that have been used, supplies, techniques, designers, books, even local yarn shops. And then we post those on Ravelry. So if something keeps sticking in your mind and you wish you could remember that pattern that was mentioned or seen, you can go back to our notes and click on the links. We try to hyperlink everything. And so that's what we're looking at ahead for May. Did I miss anything in that neck of the woods, Dawn? I don't think so. That was a lot of info. Well, you know what? We have one more giveaway, right? So as Dawn mentioned, she finished some beautiful saltwater mittens. And we do have a saltwater mitten cow going on. And as she mentioned, there are some beautiful projects. And you know what? That random number generator selected someone for a very special gift. And this week's winner for the Saltwater Newfoundland Mittens is Miss Sue, Sue C. Quilts. Congratulations. Now, darling, if you would email Dawn, she will be able to get some information from you because the gift is coming from Newfoundland. <laughs> ah! oh no 
Oh, so how exciting. Thank you for all your participants. We'll have more drawings in these cals. Um, they're not every week, but we just try to do it to um, let you know how much we appreciate your participation. And I think that brings us to the end, Dawn. Uh, what would Nikki say? That's exactly how we have to end our... <laughs> We have to end our podcast because our dear, profound, and wise sister always has a nugget for us to chew on, doesn't she? She does. So let me share with you episode 56, What Would Nikki Say? Watching someone do what they enjoy sure brings pleasure to those who are part of that adventure. And isn't that true? Yep. When good. you watch someone doing what they're doing... It's just delightful because you can see it all over their face. And we certainly do appreciate our dear sister, Nikki and Miss Donna for their faithful support. And we also appreciate you. And we're hoping that each one of you this week has a perfect sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. And we look forward to seeing you for episode 57. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.